Tim, okay, so, back here right. again. Thank you, yes, sir. sir. Oh, thank I, you for having me. First three, Pete, on the podcast. <laughs> and it, it is it, yes, it, it's good to keep it alive, keep the tradition going. We're, we're doing this, and this is right after Christmas for you folks that are wondering. We're, we're, we're hot off the heels of Christmas right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is, uh, it is Boxing Day today. It is Boxing Day, and I, I'm I'm happy to be a part of this tradition. It, it it makes me feel good. I say, you know what? Yeah, we're wrapping up the year, but I know that Tim's gonna come on, and we're gonna have a good I'm gonna time. Be here. Yeah, I'm gonna be here in in Modesto, correct? I'm in Modesto. I'm at my sister's house. Uh, yeah, my family lives here, so uh, so I'm here. Um, you 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 go and visit. You say this 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 is the time of year. I gotta I get back to my roots. I gotta go yeah, back of to course, of course. It's it's very gray today in Modesto. It's usually a little bit nicer this time of year, but it's it's been very gray. Uh, I went to the skate park this morning and my hands were just absolutely freezing. And uh, yeah, it's I mean it's it's usually a good ten degrees colder than LA generally, um, but it feels much much more. Um, yeah, <laughs> hands hands are cracking. My my dad uh, recently retired. Um, he loves snowboarding, um, so he's partaking in snowboarding at the age of uh, seventy. That's good. Um, that's that's a prime sister- time to do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really and truly. Um, yeah, I think he, uh, I think he'll take up more snowboarding trips. Uh, my sisters and I got him a a pass. So I think it was Dodge Ridge. Uh, Sweet. That's yeah, good. it's a little little uh, little send me off for. Uh, 45 years in the veterinary industry but, or maybe a little less but still a good chunk of time it's a good chunk of time yeah. now going back yeah. to your skate park adventure tim how did it go did you get any sweet tricks down uh no i don't really do much in the way of tricks i'm, I'm more into just cruising riding riding around bowls and yeah carving nothing, it up nothing wild i love to carve it up man yeah. yeah it's i feel like it's it's more age appropriate for someone's 40 and I, I sort of got back into skateboarding over the pandemic and decided I'm just going to try to do mellow stuff. You know, uh, I feel like we have wild. chatted about your skating activities and I'm, I'm liking that it hasn't uh, uh, gone away. You're still on it. <laughs> it hasn't gone. It hasn't gone away. It hasn't progressed. So. It's going to get that exercise. Get that exercise. Yeah, get, out yeah, there. get that heart. Yeah. Elevate that heart rate. All now these you, things are important as you as you age. Absolutely. And and your father could attest to this. I mean, he is oh yeah, he's he's going down those slopes. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, inspiring to be in the X Games someday. That'd be uh, good. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to the debut. <laughs> As am I. Uh you said he was a he was a veterinarian. That's that, that's what he did for 40 yeah, plus years. Yeah. yeah, he had he had a practice out in uh Riverbank, California. He'd been trying to um retire for a number of years. Um, uh, but he sold the practice on the condition that he would work there and sort of taper off his services, you know, going from working six days a week to five to four to three to two to one. Um, and now he's out. Um, although he did, he did go back last week. He had seven surgeries to do in a day. Um, but he was actually saying that if he could just only do surgeries, he would continue working. But Yeah. Did he ever, you know, kind of not pressure you, but was like, Hey, why don't you, why don't you come learn the trade with me? Was was that Um, ever a conversation that occurred? There wasn't really the pressure from him to do something like that. But I think, you know, growing up, a lot of people asked if I would follow in my dad's footsteps and become a veterinarian. And I kind of have a squeamish stomach with uh, blood. And I, I just remember seeing my dad do certain things when I was younger that just really really repulsed me and made me never want to do what he does and my mom's also she she works in healthcare too she's a nurse practitioner my other sister uh is a neo sister whose house i'm at right now she's a neonatal nurse practitioner and my my little sister is a dietitian so i'm kind of the uh the the black sheep in terms of the family in terms of like occupation because uh i i don't have the brains nor the uh, stomach to get in the uh the medical world but you're doing different stuff tim you you said all right stuff, yeah. you, you say that's covered let me let me let me cover another base for the family yeah. you're doing them a service you're doing them a service I, th- I think so yeah 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 i think so they, they accept it they accept it i mean every once in a while there 
as you know, music is not really like the most reliable thing in the world. And for like a long time, I was like just doing other things, you know, to pay rent um, while, while being a person that went on tour, but, you know, I wasn't making a living or anything out of it. And my dad would just, you know, he'd send me little links to like, you know, what, what about becoming like an x-ray technician? You think about doing that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Paramedic, you should be a paramedic, Bob. I'm like, oh, sure, sure. I mean, well, that's, I think that's the benefit of having your, your dad and, you know, even though it's not the human medical profession, whenever I've had like little injuries, like I remember one time riding my bike and I forgot what my wheels got stuck in. It got stuck in something. I just went over the handlebars and just oh. skidded on the pavement on my chin. And my dad was kind of like, yeah, I'll stitch that up myself. And so we went to his office and uh, I lied down on the exam table that, uh, you know, he'd be neutering dogs and got my chin stitched up and. It serves multi-purposes that table, you know, it, it doesn't matter who's on it. Somebody it's, it's getting fixed, whatever needs to be fixed. Yeah. I've had, I've had x-rays done in that place. And I was like, this just feels a little weird. Like skateboarding injuries growing up and yeah. You're a true skater, it's, Tim. You're, 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 you're true. I'm, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> X I'm not really, I took, I took, I took a very, no, I, I'm just really unskilled. And I took like a good 20 years off. Um, but I just got back into it during the pandemic my nephew expressed interest in skateboarding. Um, he got my old skateboard that was at my parents' house for a long time. And I was just looking for something to do over the pandemic. And with him getting into it, I was like, oh, hey, I'll try this again. And started going to skate parks to, uh, you know, just do something other than, I don't know, watching, watch Netflix, you know. Sure. There's only so much something. stuff that is good on there. You got to kind of weed it out. Yeah. 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 Have you yeah. been watching anything recently? that is caught in your eye that you're, that you're invested in either a movie or a TV show. Oh, I mean, I think like everybody else in the world, I really got into new season of white Lotus and I keep on hearing about it. Oh, you haven't seen it. I have, I have not seen it. No. Oh man. Do yourself a favor. It's good. All it's right. Good. White Lotus it's, is good. It's HBO, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. HBO. Are you prone to checking out something that somebody's giving you a recommendation on TV wise? Or movie wise, uh, I guess it depends on the source. Um, sure, that, that is that's person, yeah. key. Yeah, if it's a person whose tastes I align with, usually, I'll take I'll take them up on it. Um, other times, you know, I'll casually check out the recommendation. Yeah, like, in 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 passing. But if somebody gives you a bad recommendation for something, they're off the list, right? Like it's like ah, you're wrong about that thing. So I don't know if uh, I'm gonna. I, I I give people I give people uh, I give people a lot of chances. Too stuff. many. But, it uh, sounds like it sounds like you've been too, burned a couple of times, Tim. That's this from outside perspective. <laughs> I get I get burned, but I I, uh, I I allow myself to get burned. It's it's yeah. You need you need to feel the heat once in a while. It's cold out there. Yeah yeah. Now, are you also doling out recommendations or stuff? Ah, not so much. I get a little in my head about it sometimes. Like, like uh, if they don't, if they don't like it, I, I feel embarrassed and feel like I have to apologize a bunch. Oh, it is really what sorry. it is. You go, you go, you know what? I liked it. I thought that you'd like it and you just got to live with that, you know? Yeah. But then I feel bad. Like, oh, I, just, I didn't know this person as well as I thought I did. Or what does it say about our relationship? You know, that's, that's, it. it's a crucial question that needs to be addressed. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it probably will never be addressed, but yeah. How often are people giving you music recommendations? Is that more common than like a movie or a TV show recommendation? Uh, not too often. Um, I think it's more or less a thing of like, oh, driving around to somebody and they're putting something on. I'm like, oh, this is great. What is this? And then getting the story behind that or, um, you know, going record shopping with someone and then being like, oh, you know this? No, I don't. You should check it out. And then, yeah, that's usually the extent of a. That's a big leap, though, if you're if you're buying, if you're buying the record that you have no idea what it is. That's a that's that's a bigger leap than just putting it on a Spotify or something. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, I, I if I don't like it, I won't send an invoice to the person and say I need my money back for this. But. <laughs> you know, if it's if it, it depends, like how spirited the recommendation is. If the person is like, 
really emphatic on, oh my God, you, you don't know this. You have, you have to know this. Okay, I got to buy this. We're just like, oh, you, you don't know this. Yeah, you might like it. Like, that's, that's usually like, I'll make note of what this record is. Give it a listen to. Come to your own conclusion later on. Exactly. Then, then dole out the hard-earned cash. And, yeah. Right. How often are you finding new music? Is it through word to mouth of other people that are telling you to check it out? Or is it that you're stumbling across it um, randomly? How often or, or uh, how, how often or, is, or how is? What's the, what's the question exactly? How, how is and, and often? Actually and both. Often, I wouldn't say it's particularly often. Um, I think how is, it's, I, I, I put more stock in the recommendation of a friend, especially a friend with a, taste that I align with usually um I sometimes feel like you know the job of the publicist is to kind of make things aware to the public and so sometimes you see something like being hyped up and it's it's not necessarily coming from a place of genuine interest or enthusiasm it's more or less just you know coming from the fact that this person's trying to make their money and so sometimes I'm like skeptical when I you know see something just like repeatedly talked about and, and blogs or magazines because i'm usually like oh there's just like a publicist like pushing this thing like there isn't necessarily like genuine interest um so yeah I th and i think that's just more or less the way things go if it's just like a, a something done on a much more personal private level like like a zine or something like that like i usually take that enthusiasm much more seriously yeah because it's, it's wholeheartedly it's not pushed for any opposite agenda or something yeah yeah Tim, I wanted to ask you about this. I don't think that I, that I, I've been meaning to ask you this, but I don't think we ever mm -hmm. gotten to it. Um, it was Liam Gallagher, right? That, that gave a little uh, review of the static God for vice. Is it, was it Liam or no? <laughs> it was, uh, it was Liam. Yeah. <laughs> it was Liam. And uh, I came across it recently. I was like, oh, I got to ask Tim about that. Um, how did you feel when you, when you were it sent it or you first saw that, what was your initial reaction? Like, <laughs> oh shit. I mean, that's pretty incredible. <laughs> I mean, his, his take on it was, was great. I mean, the positioning of the headphones was pretty remarkable too. It was kind of just, how did he have it? It was like, it's like sort of. Yeah, it was. It was it, backwards a little it bit. Was, it was it? pushed back a bit. Yeah, super Oasis style to wear headphones for sure. Yeah. That's why I, mean, I gather he was, from it. I remember he mentioned something about Tom and Jerry. Yeah. But like in, in his in his like really thick Mancunian accent, he sounded like saying Tom and Jelly. Um Yeah, he I I, I think he akin it to somebody uh having a bad trip being chased by the um the the woman from Tom and Jerry kind of chasing yes. him with the broom. Yes, yes, that's right, that's right. And that, that, uh, something along those lines, that, that was in a, a, the direct quote, but something along <laughs> those lines, it, it, it was great. I, I love to hear it. Um, <laughs> were you astounded that he was reviewing that or listening to it, giving his initial take on it? Yeah, I mean, that guy is a, <laughs> I mean, he's a pretty, pretty unique individual. Oasis was a, such a, strange band to me and that they're but they're like we're the best band in the world we're the greatest band we're this and it was like i mean like i'm not they're they're like a band i, I won't you know fully endorse oasis but they definitely have some catchy tunes i'll say that but i i just like the swagger and just the uh the confidence like I, that to me that's like the most interesting thing about them did you feel like his d description of aesthetic god was on point on par with with what how you viewed the song i mean no but like that's like <laughs> no i mean no who cares what i think i don't, i want to hear what that dude thinks, i so. care what you think tim do you remember recording that that song specifically the static god and that was on orc correct that album it was yeah i don't remember recording that song specifically i think the uh i do remember the session for that record quite a bit um it was the first time we recorded at um the sonic ranch um, in tornillo texas a little ways outside el paso and uh strangely enough um little little side note here so my dad was born and raised in el paso the owner of the sonic ranch is this guy named tony rancich and him and my dad went to high school together 
and this was all put together um, last year. Uh, this guy Enrique Tina, he was one of the co-engineers on the record, and he went on tour with OCs doing sound and also selling merch. And you know, I was introduced. My parents came out to a show in San Francisco. Uh, Modesto is only like an hour and a half from from SF, so they came out to a show, and I was introducing them to Enrique. And my dad and him got to talking about El Paso, and he. Enrique mentioned Tony Rancic, and my dad's like, Tony Rancic? I went to school with that guy, and it's, it is the same Tony Rancic. Um, and, you know, the story of even just how that place came to be is pretty interesting. Um, First of all, I, I, I just want to take this time, Tim. That's an insane story that you just told right there, that those two worlds intersected just so yeah, out of the blue. That's wild. <laughs> that's insane. It is. It's pretty, pretty wild. Um, it's a small world, Tim. But the um, the story of the Sonic Ranch is really interesting, though. Um, it's in the middle of this pecan farm, which is the largest pecan farm in all of North America. And it, it was a territory. This family, the ranchers' families, had this property basically since the United States bought that territory from Mexico sometime in like the 1800s. And they have this massive, massive uh, pecan ranch that sort of like employs a good chunk of the town of Tornillo, Texas. It's a really small town on the Mexican border, uh, probably like 30 or so minutes outside of El Paso. But their son, Tony, um, who's my dad's age, um, you know, his family wanted him to get into the business, into raising pecans, or not raising, growing pecans. Um, he said like, oh, I actually just want to get an audio engineering. And the family said, okay, well, we give you like three acres. Is that enough to build a studio on? So they gave him three acres and he, of this, pecan, you know, land that was formerly used to grow pecans. And he just started building various studios on, on, on the property. And um, it's just kind of like a mass, a really unbelievable cl- uh, selection of gear. Um, you know, and it's and the studios catered to all budgets. Like, uh, like Fiona Apple was out there. Uh, I guess Madonna did something out there. I don't know if she mixed a record. Um, the record "Chinese Democracy" by Guns N' Roses was recorded there. Um, so it, you know, it, it catered to some big dogs, but it also, you know, a lot of bands from uh, from the LA area have recorded there. Wands recorded there. We've recorded there. Um, yeah. So wow. I got off, got off oh, that's, on that, giving you a little, little history lesson. of. Uh, I love it, Tim. Uh, you, you know, I, I, I always learn something. I always come out of these, these, uh, the interviews with you, learning something, taking away something. And, oh, well, shucks. And it's, <laughs> I do it's, I can. I do it it can. started with the skateboarding. I'll be honest. When we first started oh. and I mean, and it's progressed to this. It's just amazing. It's, it's good to see Where the progression are. between you and I over three years now. <laughs> And what That's we cover this here. Is, this has become this has become a tradition. Yeah. Um, this is it. A lot's been discussed. A lot. We've 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 traversed a lot of um different topics on this. And I it's been fairly consistent too in terms of location. Like uh, I think you've been in this room the last couple of times, but right the, uh, the artwork on the the artwork on the walls has changed. Um a, a, a bit, yeah. I've I, I've changed yeah. some stuff up. Yeah. Got that that painting and the and the other one. <clears throat> mm-hmm. some nice stuff that was from a south, uh, south african flight that i took and it oh, was nice. it was on the where plane did, where did you go i went to tanzania on a safari i don't know back in 2018 oh yeah. my god yeah how yeah. was so that it was amazing you could, you could see a bunch of different animals and it was great to that, that's, that's the only time i've been out of the country was just go to south africa that's and a long flight it was a long flight yes sir uh, did you go to a i mean I, i've only been to south africa once uh we played in cape town but we flew from la to london and then from london straight down to cape town yeah i mean what, what, what was your routing i went from la to new york and then straight to south africa no 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 layover besides uh jfk and then oh, okay directly over there so yeah it was it was a it was good chunk of time on that plane but Jeez, as, yeah, as you know tim yeah i think it was uh 24 hours of transit total oh my god uh, yeah which uh 
it's it's almost feels psychedelic after a while. It's just, it's just you're just oh. sitting there. <laughs> was that yeah, what, was yeah. was that the longest flight that you've been on? By the way, was that what, does it take the cake? I believe so. Yeah, I mean it's broken up. I think going to Australia feels longer because it, it it isn't broken up. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's like 15 hours to get to Melbourne or Sydney. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've heard that it, that that's, it's just a long, it feels like a longer stretch than, than anything else. If you come from the States. Yeah, it's, it's, it's odd. You watch a, watch a lot of movies and I feel like one of those flights, I got to watch lethal weapon one through four. (laughs) <laughs> which was nice. Um, you know, there's like, there's certain movies too uh, that I found that like, you kind of just, you just classify them as like plain movies because you wouldn't see them in the theaters. You wouldn't watch them at home, but you're on a long flight. You're going to, you're going to watch the hangover series or you're checking it out. You're, yeah. You're checking out bridesmaids, the hangover. Um, Modern yeah. cinema classics yeah 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 that's that's equivalent to the godfather that's the closest thing we have is the hangover series in bridesmaids yes yeah yeah and then the canon of plain movies uh the hangover is the the godfather and uh i don't know what i don't know what bridesmaids would be but maybe like goodfellas let's let's say goodfellas in terms of goodfellas is yeah goodfellas is uh that's been a plain movie but that would also be a uh, that'd be a living room movie yeah, and I've, that could be that could be that would be a theater movie. That would that is a multi multi location. My brain is just shot today, man. It's, I'm sorry. It's the, no, 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 it's it, it's the three it's the three tiers. It's got it it's got a it's got room to move within it. I'm yeah, with yeah. you, Tim. I'm right there with you. Room to move. Room to move. That's Ray Liotta. Yeah. Uh, Crucial. Um, yeah. going didn't going he back. pass recently? He did. He did Ray wow. Liotta. My my mom had texted me it. There's this thing that if I hear about a celebrity passing away, or my mom hears about a celebrity passing away, we got we gotta we gotta share the news as soon as it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which one affected you the most recently? The most? I I would say Betty White, and it's interesting. Oh, because I was thinking about Betty White before she had passed, and like she was she's older than sliced bread. Somebody had made that mm. comparison. I think some comedian is like yeah he's she's literally older than sliced bread and i was thinking about her a lot like wow you know that's a that's a good chunk of time to be on this this earth i was like she's still around like that's wild that's insane you know and then uh i don't know like maybe like a week after like just kind of thinking about a lot she had passed like whoa that's that's kind of that's kind of trippy just betty white floating around and then finally were you were you a golden girls fan i was not now i it was was one that it was on um do you remember that um station tv land remember that one yeah mm-hmm. tv land would show that a lot uh bonanza mm-hmm. gun smoke those are like yeah. three staples of tv land of for TV land, yeah quite a few years and i remember like just catching it on occasion i wasn't a religious watcher but if it was on it's like eh, all right it's on okay or i'm at somebody else's house and it's just the tv's on it's like all right there's there's b arthur and betty white and yeah the other lady I, I- I loved Betty White's character. Uh, it was, I think Rose Nyland or Nylander, I think was her character's name. We're going to yeah, go just, with that. Gonna, whether yeah, it yeah. is or isn't, we're just going to say that it is. <laughs> uh, out of respect to Miss White, I think it was Rose Nyland. But uh, yeah, sweet, innocent lady, just a little forgetful, but always always with the best of intentions. Just gold. Big, big fan of her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I had a w- weird uh, kind of uh, experience with Lemmy's death from Motorhead when he passed oh. away. I was watching a video on YouTube and it was like 10 rock stars that surprisingly haven't died from drugs or alcohol. It yeah. was like going going down the list and I was like, number six, Lemmy was it Kil- Kilstein or Killmeister? Kil- Killmeister. Killmeister. Yeah. Yeah, Lemmy Killmeister, yeah. Motorhead. I, I paused it. I walked downstairs and the downstairs TV was on like KTLA 5 and it's like Lemmy dead. I was like, whoa, like that's pretty wild. Like I was pretty just, wild. just paused it right there and I was like, whoa, it's that was like a weird yeah. kind of thing. It's like, whoo. Strange timing. Very Ugh. strange. Very odd. I I watched this uh 
I forgot who does the series. I feel like it's like a Vice series, but uh, it's hosted by Matt Sweeney. It's called Guitar Moves, where he just interviews people and just discusses guitar playing and influences mm-hmm. and so on. And he did an interview with Lemmy, and it was done, I don't know, maybe a couple months before he passed. But you could tell during the interview, he's not in good health. I mean, you know, in the interview, they have people with their guitars, and they kind of will end up jamming. Like, he's had, like, James Williamson from the Stooges, Jay Massis, um, Dean Ween. And they kind of just discuss guitar playing. And so Lemmy and Matt are there, you know, both with Rickenbacker basses. And Lemmy can just, he's like struggling to hold the bass and struggling to, you know, press down on the frets. And his voice is pretty shot. Like, you know, he's, he's not long for the world, but incredibly cool till the end, super thoughtful. Um, yeah. I, I always liked, I always liked Lemmy. He seemed like a very authentic person. Right, I think like, like, his, like you, you knew what you were getting into from like who he was in interviews and and, and, yeah. what, and what he discussed. Yeah, and I, I feel like the appeal of Lemmy, um, it's different for different people. Like I think like just this idea of this guy that just kept doing this thing and kept living this life, and you know, at, at the Rainbow Room, and still doing speed and still drinking, you know, Jack and Coke, like still doing all this stuff. Like it was appealing to people because you know there are a lot of folks that you can't keep holding on to this this lifestyle and you can't keep doing this thing and and he just you know represented this just rebellious wild dude for a lot of people i am a not a rebellious wild dude in the slightest um he says to do that skateboards all the time and is is breaking stuff yeah okay yeah tim yeah you're not rebellious. yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, what no, I do. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy who likes to go to bed early and I don't really drink much and I don't really like leaving my house much. But uh, I, I liked Lemmy for his authenticity. He just seemed, when you'd have these interviews, you'd have these interviews with him, he just seemed like a legitimately honest uh, stand up dude. Um, no bullshit, no pretense. Um, And yeah, I mean, then the song Motorhead by Motorhead on the record Motorhead just has the coolest bass tone ever. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, that, that was a tough one. That was a, let me pass him was tough. But, you know, he was a genuine, real, real deal dude. Um, yeah. And, and, he, and he, he fit that kind of um, thing that you don't see very often with a bassist singing. It's uh, it's rare to see that. And I mean, he, he yeah. fit that role very, very well. I totally. I thought, yeah. And his, his style of playing bass was like, you know, not what people really, not, it's not a very typical bass playing style. Like he played it like a guitar, like it, you know, he'd play chords and he, you know, played through guitar amps mostly. And, just super overdriven um yeah i don't know man he was he was a, he was unique very authentic was he a huge influence on you when you decided to pick up the bass not really no i mean i think when i picked up the bass no and i wasn't like a motorhead fan when i first started playing bass but later on like i really grew to appreciate it and um it wasn't probably an influence on on like oh i want to i want to play like lemmy but mo- i guess more or less like a an influence in terms of uh approach like you can, you can do whatever you want you don't have to play bass in a certain fashion like if you want to play it like guitar play it like guitar if you want to you know i don't know if you want to slap you can slap but you don't have to if you want to play with a pick you can play with a pick if you want to just you know, not focus on the kick drum. You don't have to focus on the kick drum. You can do whatever you want. And I kind of, I appreciate that. It, it widened your, your viewpoint on bass. Yeah. Yeah. I think, so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, now you usually play the, with a pick, right? Most, usually most do, of the time. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. yeah. Did you, did I, you start playing with the pick or did you uh, first were just. Yeah. I, I started, I started playing uh, guitar. That was how I first got into playing bass. And then, when I got my first job, um, I ended up buying a bass because it just seemed like everybody played guitar. And, you know, we had a, a handful of friends here in Modesto that played drums already. So, you know, I 
didn't need to have another drummer. So I figured like, oh, I could be, I could be in bands if I played bass because nobody really wanted to play bass. It's like, oh, I'll get a bass. I'll play, I'll play bass. And, and, you, and, you, and you got into it and then you're like, Lemmy's the shit. And then, you know, it just progressed from there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, Lemmy's the shit. Steve Harris is the shit. Um, yeah. I don't well, know. Yeah, of I, course, I never... but we don't need to. I mean, everybody knows that. <laughs> everybody knows that. Everyone knows uh, that. I wasn't really like, I, I didn't really have like a favorite bass player though, like growing up or anything. I didn't really look at it that way. I just like just had bands that I liked and then would try to learn how to play their songs. But I, I never really thought of it in terms of like, oh, this guy's a great bass player. Cause I think like, a lot of stuff I listened to you know, growing up was just like punk rock stuff where it wasn't really about the bass as this instrument that needs to shine. It was just something that, you know, needed to serve the song, you know, like your, your job as a bass player wasn't really to be like, you know, look at me. I'm, I'm the shit. It was just like, I was like, I'm here to be of service to others. I'm here to, you know, I'm, I'm here to serve the band, not me. And, um, it's a selfless I, duty. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, you really, you shouldn't think about yourself too much. Like you're, you're here to like, you're here in like a supporting role. Uh, so that's kind of how I look at bass playing. Um, it should, you know, it's cool if, if, if I could do something that's like noticeable or memorable, but like for the most part, like my, my job is to just kind of like be that link, I guess, as a bass player between what the drums are doing and what the, uh, guitars are doing you know right oh where where is where are you in orange county i don't know if i'm revealing too much too many of the secrets here where no no, no. i'm in modesto uh, oh, i'm in your belinda oh okay okay hmm. okay land of richard nixon over here your belinda was he from your belinda yes sir he was okay okay we got richard nixon is... and probably somebody else but richard nixon's the the high water mark the guy. <laughs> for the city. What a, what a water mark, yeah. Watergate mark, yeah. It was yeah, yeah. right there. I had to, I had to shoehorn is, it in there. Is that a source of pride for your Belindans that you guys have Richard Nixon as a? Yeah, yeah, I mean his house is still there, and it's preserved, and we got the, the um, library. I live in a, I live in Glendale in California, where I don't know. Um, I don't know who we have. As a claim to fame politically, I, I just know Scott Gorham from Thin Lizzy was born there. So I thought that was that was pretty good. But it's pretty memorable. Way, mem pretty way memorable. more memorable than Richard Nixon. I don't know about more memorable, but I, you know. Um, I, I'll take I'll take Scott Gorham over Richard Nixon. But yeah, I as but, as but, would I, as would I. Good, good pick. Modesto, uh, where I'm from and where I'm where we're chatting right now. Um, we have a uh, George Lucas. Um Never heard George of George Lucas. What did he do? Yeah, uh, did quite a bit, you know. Did, Indie filmmaker, things. right? Indie yeah, yeah, yeah. Cans, so. yeah. can can film festival, yeah. that kind of jazz. Yeah, he's yeah he's he's done some things. He's done some things. In fact, uh, the movie American Graffiti uh, was based on his time as a teenager in Modesto, and there's this point called there's this area called Five Point Modesto where it's like a couple of different streets collide into a five point, mm -hmm. but there's, um, there's kind of a little statue of like a, an old car and a, a, a 1950s looking couple. Like, I think they're like sharing a milkshake or something, but it's a little, uh, homage to, uh, American graffiti. That's a good film. That's a good one. I've actually never watched it in its entirety. I've just seen parts of it, but actually but. even moving Further in this, the last time I saw it was on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have we have George Lucas from here. Uh, the band Granddaddy was a was a successful group from here, and we had uh, I guess the most recent times the uh, murder of uh, Lacey and or Lacey Peterson was. I don't know if, if you were alive when that happened. But, uh, I do, I don't know who Lacey Pe Lacey Pe Peterson. Or Peter. Peterson. Yeah, Peterson. it was just, it was just this, this woman that was murdered supposedly by her husband and it made headlines and kind of big, big case. Big, big case. Were you on it? Were you that. were you doing some some uh you know investigation work? Uh, no, I was part? I was 
I was already living in San Francisco, but uh, every once in a while, like, you know, I'd take friends from San Francisco to go to Modesto and hang out. And uh, so many people wanted to uh, see the Lacey Peterson house. So drive by the Lacey Peterson house. And, yeah. Now, it, was it solved? Was it, is it, or is it a cold case as we're, as we're sitting here right now discussing it? Here's, I mean, it's tough. That's tough. Because the, the, her husband, Scott, was arrested for it. Okay. And the man was pretty suspect. He was not a, he was not a good husband. He was cheating on her. But Never the again. DNA evidence, DNA evidence did not point to his guilt. And there's a great documentary on Hulu that kind of uh, makes you question his guilty verdict. And he actually recently um, requested a retrial and it was denied. He's, you know, life in prison. I think he's in San Quentin. But uh, I don't know. There's uh, DNA evidence doesn't point to him actually doing it. And also uh, eyewitnesses accounts of, of his whereabouts and Lacey's whereabouts doesn't put him in Modesto at the time of the murder, yada, yada, yada. But What's your take on it? Do you think he did it? Do you think it was Scott's fault? I mean, I'm only going by this documentary on Hulu that was telling me that he probably didn't do it. Um, <laughs> I, I can't say. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter what I think anyway, but. It, it, I think it does, Tim. I think you got to crack this <laughs> thing wide open. You got to you got to fight for this man's justice. Okay, I didn't know that. I mean, this is usually a, a music kind of oriented podcast, but now we're yeah, we haven't really discussed into, that much music here. To be honest, <laughs> we're drifting into a uh, murder mystery. <laughs> oh yeah, this is. I mean, this is how the vineyard is devolved into a true crime podcast here. Yeah, it it it, it kind of it, it morphs. It's it's fluid, and it's and yeah. It's, uh, I think what it's about. You said you live by or in glendale now yeah, yes yeah, i live in glendale on the glendale uh atwater village border mm. now did you immediately move to that area when you moved to la have you always been around the same no i've lived in a couple of different places i i first moved to hollywood sublet a, a place from a friend oh that's right you and you did the your your pa work for the bachelor yes. yeah yeah did that for a, a good while uh yeah moved to echo park highland park garbanza pasadena and now glendale so no. in the, in the 10 years the 10 years i've moved around a fair amount of time really quite a bit yeah you're, but you're you're seeing what you like and what you don't like it's it it's a yeah it's a process yeah, yeah. I, I mean i've liked it all i haven't hated any place i've lived it's all been all been pretty good but and glendale and pasadena were the uh those were the best, but now I ideally, if you could live in another area or at least just to try it out, what would be the next area that you would want to Ooh. venture into? I would love to live more or less just in somewhere like either right at the foot of the Angeles National Forest or actually like in the Angeles National Forest. Um You know, it's, I think like buying a house in LA just seems kind of like really out of reach, but every once in a while I'll, I'll like see a cabin or something like that. That's like maybe like 15 minutes in, but like, they have to like, it's all cash. Like they'll be like for sale for like under 300,000, like, Oh, maybe we could finance something like this, but like they want all cash, but cash that would be only. like ideal cash only. Yes. It, I ideally I'd be in like the forest, but like able to like get into town in like 25, 30 minutes. That'd be the dream, but that'd be nice. Yeah, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Going go, going back to the to the colder elements, but not yeah. as not as cold as there, but still. Nice uh, I mean, it could it, it could get it could get snowy up there. Yeah. Mm, okay, good. So yeah. you're so you're you're really going back, and of course you're gonna invite your dad over to snowboard. Yeah. Oh these, yeah. These things. Mm -hmm. Well, I was telling him next time he comes and visits. He could bring a snowboard, um, but I've gone sledding a handful of times up. Uh, you drive up Highway 2 into the, into the Angeles National Forest. There's an abandoned ski lift, uh, Mount Waterman. Um, and it's just a fantastic place to go, go sledding. So my dad comes down, I'll get on the toboggan. He'll get on his snowboard. We'll race each other. It'll be, it'll be a good time. It'll be a damn hoot, let me tell you. 
I, I also wanted to, to ask you about this because this is a recent revelation and I'm mm-hmm. sorry to shoehorn this in here and going back to music. I know you hate discussing it. Oh, I, yeah. I do need to ask you about it. You were in a band and I forget the name of the band <clears throat> with Robbie Simon, mm-hmm. the artist. He's a good friend of mine. I love Robbie to death. Yeah, we had a band called Wet Illustrated. Um, that was the name of the band, Wet Illustrated. Yeah, we, um, you know, I met Robbie at Amoeba. We had kind of similar musical tastes. And uh, Robbie and I had like a television personalities cover band called All the Young Children on Crack. And it was kind of like the first time we ever played together. Um, I was playing bass. Robbie was playing drums and singing. And um, our friend Andrew Lux was playing guitar and singing. But that was kind of like the first time Robbie and I ever played together. And then um, we played a couple of different bands together. Uh, we played in this band called Photo Booth for a little bit. It was kind of like a melodic, garagey, poppy kind of thing. And then Robbie uh, and I played with Ty Siegel for, uh, we did one tour as uh, the three of us. Was, uh, Emily Rose couldn't play drums for that tour. I think she had. It was like her last semester at school or something. But yeah, so me and Robbie playing in Ty's band, and we just kind of started this thing, Wet Illustrated. It was just the two of us for a little bit. We did a seven-inch. Uh, and we had just a couple of different friends play with us. Uh, Will Ivey um, ended up playing bass. He, he plays in Flatworms uh, with me and Justin Sullivan. Fantastic. And that's, our, that's a fantastic trio, by the way. I'm, I'm not oh, trying to cut you, you off here, you. Tim, but that's oh, thank band. You fantastic if you haven't checked it out go check it out fantastic oh, can't, can't say enough good things about that band anyways oh thank you thank you yes sir and then yeah and then our buddy chris nodal also played guitar and what illustrated but uh, we were we were uh <clears throat> what illustrated was a funny band we were uh we were not very good um we were kind of like we we're all kind of we weren't the best musicians and we we're also kind of like we also were just broke all the time so we just kind of like all our stuff was just breaking down constantly we could never afford to get it fixed um yeah we were just kind of always just suffering from a a lack of funds we'd attempt to tour in uh my ford ranger it's a small pickup truck i was the only person that could drive stick as well and it's it's one of those you know it's a small truck like four cylinder and it's fine for two people, a little uncomfortable for three people, and massively uncomfortable for four people. And we do shows that way, and then we'd go on these tours, and we, you know, would have to basically take the gear inside every night because we couldn't just leave it sitting in our pickup truck. Uh, one of the tours we did, we just lost all the records. We had a box of the seven inches that Robbie and I did, and they just fell out somewhere on Highway Five. Um, we're a but it was really fun though. We were, I mean, we were all super close friends and still are. And as terrible as a band we were, we had a, we had a great time. That's amazing. That's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. It was, it was like, it was a very low stakes band. Like, I mean, just keep the friendships intact and just uh, have fun. That's kind of what we did. That's, that's awesome. I like that story, Tim. That's good. That's good. I'm I, I'm glad I brought that up because I didn't know that that existed until I saw a picture of you, <laughs> Robbie, and I and I forget the the other man's name, but when you guys were a trio. Um, oh, Chris Chris Nodell was. There's probably photos of us as a trio. Yeah, but that was just that was just two guitars and 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 drums, and then we brought Will in on bass. And yeah, I was like, whoa, that's it's an odd it's an odd pairing. I didn't I didn't I. <laughs> Not that you guys didn't know each other, but I was like, oh, I didn't know that Robbie would 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 be in a band. Yeah, yeah, I I don't think he's really done anything since What Illustrated. Um, I think like we our last show was sometime in like 2013. It wasn't even an intentional last show. Um, it was just we just I mean, other things started happening. Like I started playing at OCs like fairly shortly after that that show, and um, you know, Robbie. Just really was focusing more on art. Um, Will had other bands, and um, and Chris um, Chris got married, moved to New York City, and um, so yeah, it was just I don't know. It just kind of fizzled out. No, no huge yelling matches or anything, or you know disputes or anything. Just you know fizzled out. It's, right, and I mean it is coming back uh, this year, though. Correct, this next year. <laughs> 
I mean, there's a, there's no one, no one uh, batting on our doors for that, but reunion tour. I'm, it's... I'm saying it right now. So please keep an eye out for that folks. When it, when it comes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I don't, it's, it's nothing anybody's wanting, including members of the band, but uh, let me rephrase that. I want it. I would like to see it in person. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm getting the ball rolling on this. So August, August 28th, Richard Nixon library, Norval into California. Be ready. We'll be there. What illustrated performing live for Jacob Brunel. Could you play a bit yeah. closer though? You want, you want a, you want a low impact commute. Uh, yeah. I need, it. I need it closer to me. Yeah. You want to just at your house? We'll... Yeah. In Jacob, the Jacob's house, August 28th. Be there. Jacob's yeah. backyard. Casa Brunette. What illustrated live the reunion. No one asked for, but well, Jacob asked for it. But... I did. Yeah. <laughs> I always love shows in Orange County. It, it's just real easy commute to wherever it is. You know, parking's a little yeah. bit difficult, but easier than like Zebulon, for instance. That was Zebulon's a little hard. That's a difficulty. A yeah, I, I, I live I live fairly close to, to Zebulon. I can I can ride my bike there. It's a easy commute for me now. I'm just gonna park at your place next time I gotta go, Tim, because this is it's just too difficult. If you if you want, bring a bike. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll we'll, we'll jam out there together. Yeah, yeah. My parents actually have a recumbent tandem bike. Have you ever seen a recumbent bike before? No. I so those are those. So. It's supposed to be ergonomic, I guess. It's supposed to be better for your posture. It's one of those bikes where your feet are sort of, you know, they're not downward; they're upward. You're like pedaling in the air. Um, oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so you're kind of tilted. You're tilted, kinda, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you're not hunched over. Um, so my parents have a recumbent tandem um, named Sparkle, and we could, uh, we could, we could borrow that, and uh, you and I. I'm looking forward to that, Tim. I am. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll make that happen. It'll be fantastic. All right, good. We'll we'll, we'll roll up and we'll 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 chain the bike. We'll uh, we, I don't. I honestly, I don't think anyone would want to steal this stupid looking thing. <laughs> but they but, want that sparkle. Uh, no, no they, need. they need that sparkle. It's yeah. Crucial. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if they need. It. <laughs> I I went there, uh, maybe like t- uh, two weeks ago now, I believe, to go see Jonathan Richmond doing his oh, was residency it? it was fantastic it's great i hadn't seen him in a minute <clears throat> i have never was... seen him <sighs> i missed out yeah i had a very i had a very busy month i wasn't really able to do much but next month we'll get we'll, we'll, <laughs> next... we'll get him to play again yeah yeah i hope so i heard it was great though i um yeah i december was super busy though I had Flatworms recording Ooh, a record, and then all right, I like that. And then a show, a show in Berkeley for OCs. Came back, we re- OCs rehearsed for a new record. Then we flew to New York for two shows. On that flight, somebody died. On the, on the flight to New York, which was bananas. So you're leaving from LAX, I'm assuming, to get we're over from LAX. We're JFK. flying to New York, and you know. I I remember just seeing flight attendants rushing to the back. We were kind of like in the middle front area. And you never want to see that because no matter what's going on, they're always very calm and walking. It's never like an they urgency. Are, it, but they sort of picked up the pace a little bit. Things were seeming a little uh, off. That's definitely, that's going to trigger something that something's awry. And I forgot who in the band looked back, but they were like, oh my God, like they're like, somebody's like on the floor. Like, and their feet are facing us. Like it looks like they may have like just come out of the restroom and just fallen on the ground. Um, and then we hear them getting on the loudspeaker. Um, you know, is there a doctor on board? And we don't hear anything after that. And then they're like, is there a registered nurse on board? Don't hear anything. Is there anyone that's a fireman or a paramedic? And eventually like we look back and there's somebody like giving this guy chest compressions and it just keeps going and it's like 20 minutes 30 minutes and then you know i'm looking back and like they're still banging on this guy's chest and the pilot says we're gonna make an emergency landing in richmond virginia and we make it we, we land um medics get on board just like eight of them that come on and 
eventually they tell us like everyone has to deboard the plane and at that point i was like oh this guy died because this is this is you know they they got to take him off it's like and you know I, I get a meal i'm just i'm weird out i'm sitting there just at the gate looking out the plane and i see them take the guy out in a body bag and then they gotta just then they go on the hazmat suit and clean everything up um and it's just awful man like this guy just died in the air yeah i mean you guys you guys were already moving to land in virginia you guys so it was mid flight not like just taking off and then yeah yeah wow Wow, and this 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 woman that was sitting a few rows behind me over here she's on speakerphone she's talking and she's like this guy was sitting next to me and he just gets up to go to the bathroom and then he never comes back and i'm like oh my god but then the person on speakerphone says well it sounds like it was a natural death if it was a fentanyl overdose good riddance oh my god dude spare the moral judgment right now this is this is this is awful truly not awful the, not the time really? not the time not the time uh but yeah just a weird start to the day um that's an odd flight tim yeah so, i mean we we land in new york yeah and, and, and get at, pizza how long is just, it is, was that duration from virginia to new york it was like a real short right a very quick flight yeah um i'd say maybe an hour um then we land get to the hotel and go across the street for pizza and we're just kind of like that was just what a way to go that's was so odd I just, I just feel bad like it's just you know this this guy is gonna go see family he's like going on a business trip we don't we don't know and like is there somebody waiting for him at jfk like oh man you know it's You know, is, is, are his bags just going to be going around the carousel endlessly? Like, that's an interesting question. Who, like, yeah, where do they see the body? Like, where do they send the body after that? Like, do they, you know, it's just all these things will be figured out, but like, God, what a, just what a way to go. Um, you, you, you're contemplating some good questions there, Tim. There's a lot of variables that, that need to come into play for that. Yeah, do they send the body back, you know? Yeah, it's 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 odd. It's it's such a it's just a, a weird situation. And like you know, sometimes when you're you're just on the move and you're doing things, you don't really even have time to stop and reflect on this stuff. Like my parents, I talk to my parents. Do you want to talk about it? I'm kind of like, I gotta go play a show. Like I gotta do, you know, like I gotta get to this venue for a sound check. Like I don't, I don't know. Was it was it that us. that night that you guys went in to, to go? No, it was no, it was the next day oh, that next we day. um that we play the show. So we didn't have to like go straight from the plane to the, the show, but it's just like I'm t- I'm talking to my parents the day after the flight. Do you want to talk about it? I'm like, I actually gotta go downstairs and get an Uber to head to this venue and what a what a turn of events on a on a plane. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I can't imagine what the people at the back of the plane that were surrounding this guy as he's dying. I mean, like, like we're 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 pretty far away. Like, you know, we see the chest compressions and we see the guy on the ground, but we, I don't know what he looked like. I didn't see his face. Like, I didn't see this, the face of a guy dying. But there were people right there who saw it all, and it's know, wild. It's it's wild, man. It's 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 truly awful. Wow. Um, and what a way to go, man. Now, Tim. Aside from that, how did the actual show go? Do you guys play two or one show? We played two shows. Two shows. Um, this place called Brooklyn Made, um, which I th- mm. I'm guessing is a fairly new venue. Uh, pretty nice venue really nice green room i mean it was the, the green room was nicer than any of our apartments or houses it was unbelievable full kitchen um 
two lofts inside of the place like you know, dining room living room kitchen um a hot tub wow that's yeah uh, that's right yeah, I, I i feel like somebody had put it on their story of, of some like a the about the green room being so nice yeah yeah it was it was pretty banana uh you know we had some some friends came to the second night and you know one of one of the guys this guy paris just uh got naked and jumped right in and like it's kind of nice for like because new york's pretty cold so it was nice to warm up in there and um yeah but yeah but then yeah flew back the next day uh and started recording an oc's record the day after um so i was there for like a good three days and then came up here and i've been here for a couple days but December has just kind of been nonstop movement for me. So it's, it's nice to, I guess, have a few days where I'm just hanging out with the family and listening to my nephews and niece just screaming. So. And, and getting your skating in, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, the skating in in the morning. Yeah, get something in. And then, uh, my girlfriend is flying in. Uh, she lives in England. Is an English person living in England. Um, and uh, she's coming in tomorrow, so I'm going to drive back to LA tonight. After a, I'm going to jam with some old friends of mine. Um, we used to have a band, high school times, late high school, I guess. Um, we're going to we're going to jam at five o'clock, and I'm going to drive back to LA from there. Now that also seems like a tradition, Tim. Guy, I feel like we did talk about this last time you were on <laughs> last year. Oh, it's. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I got a lot of patterns it's uh i then probably re repeat what i've done every year it's it's like uh it's like only having like one season of seinfeld in my life it's just it's the same thing every time like you know what's happening it's the jokes are the same it's a rerun i've seen this one this, yeah it's probably been it's you know you've probably liked it the first time and you're like yeah this is more or less the same every time it's just uh yeah my, my yeah it's it's like the first time you interviewed me is like the first time you watched the smelly car episode. And then the second time is it's, it's pretty good. But you know, you're getting in the third time. You're like, Oh, we've already been through all of this before, but here you are. Tim, I've only seen that episode once. So let me just say that. Go. And it's still fresh and, and I love to watch it. <laughs> it holds, it holds up. It definitely holds up. Just like these interviews, Tim, <laughs> you are oh, the man. Thank oh, you shucks. so much. I'm, well, I'm glad you. that I've made it into the, into the fold of being a pattern at least you yearly. are part of the pattern dude. you are you are integral to the episode of the smelly car you are made it in right there you made it in yeah. just just barely um tim <laughs> you're you're the man i always love you that you're the, the man to, to come we on we can both be the man we are the men we're the men we're the men Tim, absolute pleasure to, to to have you on. I want to have you on more than once a year, and I and I've told Paul that I think we okay. got to we got to get something together, the three of us. Oh on, yeah, we could we could combine. I mean, I think it'd be possible to combine. Yeah, we'll get Dan in there too, I'm sure. And Thomas, yeah. And Thomas, have, John's, have hard, John's harder to John's harder to pin down, but uh, but uh, yeah, he could probably figure out a way to get most of us on at once. We'll get him on one day. Well, I will. I will have John on <laughs> here eventually. Um, I don't know when. I don't have a time frame for that. But yeah, I would. I, I'd love to have everybody on, and uh, we'll 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 try to set that up. But uh, in okay. the meantime, enjoy this one, folks, and go back and listen to the other two if you haven't listened to those ones because those are just amazing. And be a part of the tradition with us and in listening to these nice conversations. <laughs> well, shucks. Well, it's it's always a pleasure. Likewise, sir. Here. And as always, got to do some promotional stuff at the end here. Castlefacerecords.com, right? That's the best place to go find. Yeah, yeah. You can get OC stuff there. Um, uh, yeah, do that. Uh, if you can't do it in Castleface, there's always Revolver. They've got, they've got a, quite a bit of stuff. Um, get one of the Flatworms records is on Castleface. And uh, other ones you can get through uh, God Records, which you can get through Drag City, but I think a lot of them are also at Revolver. Revolver's a good one-stop shop for for stuff. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, Flatworms band on Instagram to keep up to date with what's going on in uh, new n- new record on the on the way. New record, yeah, new record for Flatworms, new record for OCs. Uh, new stuff, no drastic departures, but uh, well, a little bit of what you could expect, and maybe a little bit of what you couldn't expect. Who knows? Who knows? You have to you listen gotta, you gotta to find out, figure it out yourself, Tim. Real quick, though, actually, I'm real quick. Glad, I'm, I, I'm, and I'm sorry to pin this on the on the, on the last couple of minutes here. There was that um, music video for that Flatworms um, song, and I'm forgetting the name at the moment here, but it's uh, you and Justin and Will, and you guys are all dancing around a convenience store. <laughs> um, I, and I'm, oh, yeah. I'm forgetting the song. It's a great song. The song is called Petulance. It's from a seven inch we did like five, six years ago. Um, and that, that video actually came about. Uh, we we're down in Borrego Springs. We we're trying to shoot a music video for a different song, a music video that was like really an ill-conceived idea that uh, hopefully we'll never see the light of day. It's horribly embarrassing. But um, we ended up doing, um, we, we just went to this liquor store to grab some refreshments and ended up just dancing the video. And as we're leaving, we're like, this should just be a video. And so we just went in there. Um, Will, Justin, and I, and, uh, you know, uh, the girlfriend of the director and the girlfriend of the dude that was putting out the record, um, they were just dancing. And then the kid behind the counter, um, he came out and he actually had legitimate dance moves. You can kind of see him in the end. Um, he was really the star of the show and a very, a very cool kid. And his, his, his father was receptive to the idea of us doing a little silly video in there. And, that's what happened. It's, it's a great video. Uh, Thank you. I'm 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 very proud of that one. That will also be linked below, and, and you can go check that out. What are you guys dancing to? Do you remember? Oh, uh, nothing was playing. We were oh. just, yeah. We we're all like, I mean, it kind of. I don't know. Like, I haven't watched the video in a couple of years, but I, uh, I feel like I remember watching it. And like, oh, we're like not dancing to anything rhythmically at all. Like, we're all on our own there but it looks fantastic it was, it was a great time and I, I i do love that music video and uh go check it out below because it's it's definitely worth a watch Tim, you're amazing i'm gonna stop recording this thank you sir and i'll talk to you in a minute all right all right well thank you sir thank you till next time till next time